Chairman. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Verma, I've just, I want to ask you very quickly. Uh, you talk about evidence-based medicine. Do you consider a heartbeat evidence-based? Would you consider you that a living, that? would you consider that a living being if there's a heartbeat detected? Would that be evidence enough that there is life? So based on evidence-based medicine, and I, I think what you're trying well, to get at is that... No, I know what I'm trying to get at. Could you clarify but, for me what you're trying to get at? No, uh, let me just say, you talk about evidence-based medicine. A beating heart is a sign of life. And Dr. Scott, earlier you said a heartbeat can be detected at 28 days. Am I accurate? Did I understand that? I was watching in my office. Fertilization, usually it's about a week later before we can detect it via ultrasound technology. Okay, so at 23 days. Thank you very I think that's evidence of life. I want to uh, talk for just a moment. Uh, Dr. Wubenhorst and Dr. Uh, Scott, late-term abortions. When I'm talking to women in Tennessee, what I find is most people, regardless of party affiliation, they are opposed to late-term abortions. And um, the, from the work that I've done in the House and in the Senate, what I have found is that there seems to be a dismemberment of the baby involved in these late-term abortions. And many times there is an injection to stop that heart from beating. Is that accurate? Accurate? Am I correct on? Okay, you all are nodding yes. Okay, and then uh, there are occasions during late-term abortions when the baby survives that process, and then the baby is delivered alive. And I've talked to so many women who were so highly offended with Governor Northrop of Virginia's remarks around that. I'm just going to read these for the committee so that it's accurate. He said, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly what would happen. And of course, he's referring to a mother in for an abortion, and she has gone into labor. He continues, the infant would be delivered. The infant would be kept comfortable. The infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and the family desired, and then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, Dr. Wubenhorst, you have delivered a lot of babies, okay? As someone who has done this and who has personally cared for women who suffered physically and emotionally from the complications of abortion, then tell me how, is there any way, any reason, anyone would think that statement from Governor Northrop was a compassionate, caring statement? Yeah, I think it's very clear that it's not a compassionate statement because if you allow a child, and in fact, I think the legal framework in this country is that if a child is neglected, and allowed to die or kill, that's infanticide, and that's something that could be prosecuted. I think that the same the same, it's the same situation um, if a woman undergoes a, a late abortion. Um, we know that past 22, 23 weeks, we are able to resuscitate those children and they'll live. So I think that it is morally inconsistent to, uh, and this happens has happened in hospitals where I've, where I've worked. In one room, you're fighting for the life of a child who's 22, 23, 24 weeks, and in another room, you're aborting a child that's 28, 32 weeks. Yeah, and you know, uh, visiting our NICUs and having friends and family that have had babies in the NICU, and you pray over these babies for the continuation of their life and their health and their recovery. And then when you hear about the practice of late-term abortion, it's just hard to, to square that up. I find it very difficult. Dr. Scott, I want to talk to you for just a minute. Um, 
And I had talked with the DOJ about the attacks on pregnancy centers, which there has not been a push forward to address these. But there have been many cases, and we've had some in Tennessee, where they've gone after people that were across the street from the center on uh, and were going through uh, protesting. And I see my time has run out, but I do want to get this question in, and you can answer it for me. We'll do this, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll take it from her in writing. I would like to know if you think DOJ and the Biden administration is doing enough to protect the pregnancy centers. They're protecting abortion centers. Uh, but And you can give me this in writing. I would like to get your read on what they are doing that protects the pregnancy centers and the health care that you're providing for expectant moms. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Welch. 